very good evening to everyone who have joined us today evening. I'm Sandeep Ansali from Team GIDS Business School, Bangalore. Today we all are connected as a part of GIDS IRE Talks, which brings the inspiration speakers related to innovation, research, and entrepreneurship. And today's IRE topic is Enterprise Blockchain Value Proportion. So the keynote speaker is Mr. Kiran Babu, who is a data science trainer and a research faculty at GIDS IIE School. Thank you for accepting our invitation, sir, and being here with us today. So I'm sure this session will be very, very useful for all the participants. And I would love, also love to welcome all the participants on behalf of GIDS Business School Bangalore. And uh, please allow me to share a few words before we begin the IRE talks. GIBS Business School Bangalore is a place where talents are nurtured, ambitions cherished, dreams fulfilled. GIBS Business School Bangalore has two programs, BBA from Bangalore University and PGDM, which is an AICT approved program. We are under a charitable trust called as Goel Educational Trust. We are a management B school where our major focus is on the practical exposure of the student. Recently, GIBS has been awarded as a triple plus by the career 360 of 2023 and at the same time GIBS has been ranked fifth best B school by Times of India and in, in the emerging B school category and ninth best B school for the BBA placements again by Times of India. Recently GIBS has been featured and recognized by most of the India's top media houses such as Times of India, Education Times, Career 360, Higher Education Review, Business India and so on and so forth. So we are really happy and proud to say that we have been ranked amongst the top B schools in the country for the management education. And we are proud to say that GIBS has designed its curriculum with the industry 4.0 as per the industry needs so that the students of GIBS are well equipped when they move to the industry. And I would love to extend my warm greetings to Mr. Kiran Babu sir, the resource person of today's IRE talks that we are really thankful for him that he has accepted our invitation and been a part of this webinar. And it's my privilege to introduce Kiran Babu sir to this August audience. Uh, Mr. Kiran Babu is a certified data science trainer and a GIDS research faculty at GIDS IRE school. Nearly about 2,500 plus participants from 50 corporate entities have attended more than 100 training sessions on topics like business analytics, blockchain, data science, machine learning, deep learning, and so on and so forth, led by Mr. Kiran Babu. At the Global Summit, at the Global AI Summit, he has received an international award for the best deep learning project. Over 21 years of expertise, experience in managing IT programs, projects, and the digital practice. He is also a corporate digital expert facilitator with experience in program design, research, content creation, leading organization development workshops, and he's also co-authored a book by name Big Data Analytics and Machine Learning in Biomedical and Health Informatives. So I would uh, request, I would beg a pardon that I've cut down your profile. I'm extremely sorry for that. And I request all the participants, in case if you have any doubts, any queries, please put it in the Q&A section. We'll take it at the end of the day. Kiran Babu, sir, over to you, sir. Thanks, Sandeep. Thanks for that lovely introduction. Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this insightful session on blockchain for enterprise solutions. So let me go ahead and put my screen uh, so that uh, we, we can have the things uh, onboarded. So the, the whole journey of this IRE predominantly is more insightful, giving us a three-dimensional insight into the current affairs with reference to the activities which are happening in research, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Now, when we happen to talk about the, the three major digital transformations which are set to change the landscape the way things are happening today are the big data essence by itself, then the artificial intelligence, and the one which brings in a dimensionality difference in the way the businesses can be run is blockchain. So a blockchain, which is relatively younger by its definition, and if you happen to see the whole episode of blockchain is something which is as young as less than 
12 years. So the whole concept of blockchain started way back in 2008, or rather what we say, there will always be critical outputs when, when things are under distress. So the tickling point for something of this transformation to come up was the 2008 subprime crisis, which basically gave this insights. So with this being the background, what, where, how, let's get to see what exactly or how exactly blockchain at the outset works and where do we see these features of blockchain getting leveraged in our day-to-day -day industries. Probably many of us are already leveraging some of the benefits of blockchain in an indirect means without knowing what it is. But when we, when we unbox it, we get to an insight saying that where, what, how these are bringing the fruits on our day-to-day -day activity. So a quick history, like I said, goes back to 2008 October is when this paper on blockchain was presented by Satoshi Nakamoto. So this person has published a paper called as Bitcoin white paper. Now, one thing which becomes very cognizant with reference to Bitcoin, blockchain, they all sound very, very synonymous. But one thing what we will have to definitely understand is a blockchain is a platform while a Bitcoin is a product of this platform. So we will talk more about this, but since we brought in the name of the paper, I just wanted to give you that insight. So this paper was purely outlaying how exactly you try to bring a concept of decentralization. When we say decentralization, we knowingly or unknowingly today are under a centralized approach. So for example, when, when I have to give a simple example of centralized approach, today, whatever the currency we use in whichever country, the currency is regulated by the government of that country. For example, in India, the Reserve Bank of India controls the currency which is getting printed in India, which is circulated in India, all of this is centrally controlled. So we are in a central framework. So there is a central authority which governs and controls that particular thing. But contrary to this is the concept of blockchain. In sense, whatever could be centralized is being decentralized. In sense, rather one group controlling it is saying that why not all the people part of the network are having the controlling framework. Obviously, with whatever rules have to be followed, those will be in line. But in principle, the mode of decentralization kicks in. So with this being one of the things, it also started talking about something called electronic cash or digital assets for transfer. And that was something which was the stepping stone for evolution of blockchain. So since this paper got published, various blockchain platforms have evolved and there are various things and many of the derivatives, the cryptocurrency, what we call the Bitcoin, the Ethereum or all the cryptocurrencies which are a derived product from this framework of blockchain. So if you happen to see blockchain as a concept revolves around this six main components. When we say six main components, what it does is these are their building blocks, which means they are the ones which create this framework. So basically a blockchain, like I said, it's a platform can be used for across industry walks. Not necessarily, you don't have to relate. Blockchain is always to do with something to do with finances, something to do with currencies. No, that's not the whole thing. Blockchain as a concept revolves around 
this six which are uh, transactions immutable ledgers so when i said transactions at a very high level in this session there is a transaction happening which means me as a facilitator of talking i am generating the data all of you as a participants are consuming the data which is a transaction there is a give and take happening which means a transaction is something where a data is generated and data is transferred so that particular thing is the first step then immutable ledger which means if you happen to talk about mutability anything which can change we are talking about the reverse of that immutability since when anything gets created it's created without a change option so it is it is like this where initially if you happen to see while learning you are allowed to write in a pencil the reason is you might have mistakes to be made and it can be corrected but when you are as professional by your age you are expected to use pen for a simple reason that whatever you write for you watch for it you don't go ahead and change so the immutability in life comes with the usage of pen so we need to bring that on the transactions what we do is the immutability which means once you have created things should be very transparent at the same time non changeable then comes the decentralized peers so as i brought in the example what is today a centralized policy approach is getting decentralized in sense rather than controlling from the controlling sector the control is everywhere that is your decentralized approach if decentralized will go with encryption because we are talking about immutability we are talking about making everybody the controlling partners then it also brings in a need for safeguarding what is happening which is your encryption which is your encryption once you have the encryption then it comes consensus so what is consensus predominantly consensus is an approach of democracy so today whichever countries we say are democracy driven they are by voice of the people right so basically when we say 100 people are eligible to vote and the 60 people have voted for a person a as against 40 people for person b person a is in the driver seat because he enjoys more trust so consensus is that particular thing because we are decentralizing the control for everything there should be consensus before it could be turned into actions last but not the least becomes the smart contract so this is something which is optional depending upon where you are adapting blockchain smart contracts kick in so a, a smart contract by the name suggests that you are trying to bring in relative controlling onto your contracts so a simple example is a royalty program for example a singer who who uh, who enjoys some royalty with the publisher for the number of uh, records he sells his uh, song gets sold there is a royalty portion today what happens predominantly is at regular intervals the company which has the music rights derives what is the total sales what is the percentage of royalty it has to be paid and then yes, transfers that money which means it is a post mortem activity which is happening there but with the advent of smart contract what happens here in the old approach the musician or the person who has published has to believe the music company for the numbers but here you are trying to bring in that decentralized approach in between put a logic saying that if a record is sold and it is sold for x amount the 
royalty part of it automatically gets credited without waiting for the time delay or there is no need to believe somebody saying that okay he has paid the right amount not paid the right amount those things will not happen which means on the run at any given point of time you are trying to bring in a logic onto the contract rather than a post mortem so that action of making things happen as they unfold is your smart contract so it could be anything for that matter you are making an invoice payment it can be a smart contract so the number of instances where you get to see all of this becomes extensively larger so seeing all of this particular things if you happen to go each one of them in nutshell at a very high level what you get to see so for transactions basically anything like i said which has your activity involved it could be land registration personal identification transportation food distribution for that matter all of this are your transactions when you have such transactions the immutability quotient which comes into the place with the existing things becomes very very important in sense what gets created should not be editable before you go ahead and create it should be something which is thought of and makes the things very very easy the decentralized so if you happen to see this is our legacy centralized approach today if you happen to see an email email is a centralized approach in sense there is a server all our systems are cleansed we send an email for example this is person a this is person b when a person a sends a mail to person b it goes from person a to the hub which is our server and from the server it goes to person b therefore this is our centralized approach but if you happen to see a decentralized ps there is no central entity here at all person wants to person a wants to interact with person c here he directly establishes and connects without the intervention of anything called a central entity that kind of framework in in simple sense if you say this is in in a hindi in hindi there is a saying sara hatke right so the thinking slightly different is what is the whole concept of blockchain you don't think the traditional approach but at the same time you are not discounting what needs to be done if this is on decentralization you get to the encryption we we all understand what is encryption it is all about trying to convert a readable thing into some coded language so that you can have a decryptor to uh, go ahead and decrypt so that it is understood by the people who needs to understand so that kind of things bring your own encryption is what the phenomenon what we follow in blockchain so that when the transfer of data across transactions and decentralized means happens the encryption becomes very very straight forward at the same time i was talking about consensus so if i have to give a simple example of the potlucks which women or even men do so what happens in a potluck predominantly a set of five people or six people gather they have some good time and at the end of the potluck they happen to pull up money and then based on what they agreed they happen to give the money to one of the person which means of the six people one person is getting the pooled money because there is a consensus from the remaining five people the remaining five people agree saying that for this potluck this person should be given the money what is collected and the cycle continues if that is a consensus so there are various kinds of consensus which has to happen when things of transactions happen so the consensus could be the proof of work proof of stake time activity capacity the list goes lot so trying to bring in this adversities into an activity which is performing a transaction becomes your consensus so that way there is only one version of truth so if you ask the remaining five people the five people have accepted because they were all there they know what was the methodology followed 
and thus is happening but today if you happen to see in a banking approach the reason i'm picking banking example is all of us are acquainted with banking today if you deposit x amount in your savings deposit for example person a deposits 10000 person b deposits 20000 the total amount what the bank is holding is 30000 it is the bank which is deciding on your behalf who to lend this money you don't have any consensus you don't have any say even though it is your money you don't have a say saying that this money 30000 which is with the bank has to be lended to person a for a reason or person b for a reason the bank is taking the decision on your behalf so that there is no consensus mechanism there trying to bring in consensus on simple things of this nature is one of the core dna of blockchain and as i said smart contracts is the piece of code which provides business logic and here we see which all kinds of top uh, blockchains have the functionality of smart co uh, smart contracts so for example bitcoin which is one of the earliest derivatives of blockchain is a cryptocurrency which is not a full fledged blockchain framework bitcoin therefore does not have smart contracts why if you are talking about the frameworks which are blockchain are having your smart contract so ethereum is a full fledged blockchain and the cryptocurrency of ethereum is ether ether will not have a smart contract while ethereum which is the framework has the smart contracts in a similar fashion, Hyperledger is one other smart contract. This is developed by Linux Corporation with the help of IBM. So they have again smart contracts. So all these particular things when you put up into a working model. So we, we discussed about the various components. When you put all these things into a working model, a blockchain evolves. When I said blockchain evolves, predominantly these things as needed will start working. So here, if you happen to see, these are the essential components for a blockchain to make its parts moving, parts working. So a business problem to be solved, this cannot be solved with more mature technologies, probably trying to answer our questions, which were the key pillars will help us to understand this. So what happens if there is no immutability? What happens if there is no consensus? What happens if there is all the things which centralized? Those things, when we try to answer the reverse of this, the business essentials can bring in. So basically, an identified business network or a need for trust. Today, whatever we do basically revolves around trust, and we are saying that trust could be as transparent as it could be. So these things become the capabilities of your blockchain and if you happen to see let's take this simple example to understand blockchain so let's imagine that five people in the room decided to make a separate currency and they follow the flow of funds and one person basically let's call him bob decide to keep a list of all actions in a daily which means what all is happening so they have created a currency what all is happening they are writing in a book, which is a daily. Now, if you happen to see, this were the various transactions which got created and gave three coins to Mary. And is one of the person between the five. She gave three coins to Mary. Mary gave five coins to Jack. Jack gave three coins to Anne. Anne gave one coin to Adam, which means in a given span of time, it could be one day, one hour, one, uh, one month, this were the activities which happened with that currency. Now, if you see, this man, whom we call as Jack, decided to steal money. So what he do? To hide this, he changed the entries in the daily, saying that, <coughs> excuse me, Jack, instead of Jack, he changed the name to Mary. Mary gave three coins to Adam. 
Now, if you see, Bob notices that he had inferred from the diary, he decided to stop what's happening. So, what he does, basically he does something called as an hash function, which basically converts the text into set of numbers and letters as below. So, what is that? Is your encryption. A hash is a kind of encryption, which means is a string of numbers produced. So, everything can be logically converted and reconverted. So, even a small change in the string creates completely new string or a new hash. So, now if you go ahead and see this, if you have an input as cat, this is a value which is an encrypted value. While if you say a white cat is outside, this is your value. While a white cat is inside, the value is this. So if any one of these character changes, a new output is generated. So if you see, after each record, he inserted a an hash and the new daily was like this. So when you say Anne gave 10 coins to Mary, this is the hash. Now, if Anne or Mary, Mary gave five coins to Jack, this is the coded or encrypted version for this understandable thing. Now, if you see, in this case of our previous example, Jack who decided to change the entries, he goes and changes this. Mary gave eight coins instead of five, he made this five to eight. This hash got generated one, which means in the whole network, there is a entry for this and there is an entry for this, which is telling you that this particular thing got something which is changed. That way, your transparency becomes very, very, very easy. And if you see, notice somebody shifted, he decided to complicate the record of each. And after this, you can go ahead and get all your hashes and then compare if there is any changes. If there has to be a change, then comes in the fact of consensus. So, if you see, if Jack tries to change, he will have to change the hash in the previous entries. Now, Jack wanted more money. He spent the whole night counting all the hashes, which becomes immensely, immensely complex. That way, if you go ahead and do the things, you make a full proof system for you to go ahead and get your insights. This activity of doing things and making the things not for forging or not for editable becomes the crux of your blockchain. So there are various things which helps you to understand this basic principle on which blockchain drives. With this being the background, let's see how, where, what, at an enterprise level, this framework is getting leveraged. So let's see some of the use cases with regard to blockchain. Now, if you happen to see, one of the biggest entity which is a key beneficiary of blockchain is supply chain. When I say supply chain, today we, we, we are sucked into so much of carbon footprint from the producer to the consumer. We don't know how all things are getting ferried. But with the advent of blockchain, traceability which is the crux of this becomes very, very, very easy and becomes very, very simple. So if you see this, the food and beverage industry, especially the FMCG, is leveraging a lot on your supply chain. So for now, if you have to talk about the current trend, so we, we try to buy so many products which we claim to be organic, but how do we believe that it is organic? The farmer who has produced it might have produce the organic way, but by the time it reaches the consumer, it might have got adulterated. So, 
to get that entire transparency what we call from the source to the destination could be put into your blockchain so if you happen to see here a nationwide study conducted international ocean advocacy basically mislabeled 87 percent of the time and mica which was used to make up electronics and automobiles paints because of its reflective properties if often considered from illegal mines by child and labor so which was a challenge of your global thing where they wanted to identify things this particular opportunity got converted or addressed using blockchain at the same time if you see how this particular thing became the whole from the producers till the retailers entire thing is getting captured into one system which is immutable so i gave this example of hashing the same thing works here when any transaction is done that gets recorded which cannot get changed now if you happen to see the second one for journey tracking so here the logic logistical challenges at the travel across the group for example shipping delays can degrade the sensitive products such as medicines fruits or even liquor counterfeit items may even enter the supply chains undetected so here using a combination of technologies which is your iot or internet of things and blockchain as we all understand iot is the data collector blockchain is the data regulator now using this two concepts you are trying to track and validate the things and make the most out of it at the same time it could be for quality certification contract performance settlement automation the list is exhaustive this all things becomes very very inferated when can be addressed at the business opportunity now if you happen to see with regard to banking banking one of the early adopters of blockchain in various forms if you see this example the problem statements here are ample so for example this problem statement if the central bank servers goes down the entire country's payment gets stalled like i said today when when we happen to do a payment for example if you do uh, in in the indian circumstances if you do imps the instant money transfer what we all use there is a central clearing house which acts as a clearing agent so if you go ahead and drop a check of icici bank in hdfc the icici bank takes the check to the clearing house the clearing house clears it and then gets the money credited on whatever the time imagine if the central bank goes down for for a day all the payments get stalled here we are leveraging the decentralized approach rather than for talking for a bank a talking to bank b you are actually going to a centralized authority for talking you are taking away that and bringing that in the payment so imagine that gets leveraged at the global level today for example if you want to transfer a money to a bank in south korea you have to route it through and sub or you have to route it through your banking clear clearing house it could be the us dollar or it could be some other entity where you have multiple central entities but if a platform which can enable bank a in india to communicate with bank bc in korea directly the decentralized kicks in so here payment network becomes one of the key beneficiaries for your blockchain so if you happen to see some numbers with regard to operational efficiency product supremacy customer relationship all of this particular things have been measured and you are trying to see so cross border payment invoice financing bond sales all of this are having their own insights 
so the this is with regard to a use case where one of the uk banks how they used the cash tokenization utility to get in some insights with regard to monetizing the assets and then a bank in philippines how they built a closed loop crypto cash solution for rural banks in philippines which is all enterprise on service software as a service saas platform if you happen to go the blockchain becomes one of the uh, most talked about framework in real estate so it could be for for example renting the house buying the house trying to divide the whole inventory into small pieces which can be sellable becomes one of the key integral part of blockchain so today many a challenges in the real estate becomes the affordability so for example somebody wants to buy a huge property it is the various things which come in which is the trust whether what he is buying is it the right thing the transaction nothing gets rewritten and you don't get into the legal battles and owning that at any point of time who is the actual owner so this three major things which becomes very challenging in the real estate play gets addressed through blockchain at the same time the ethereum is one of the decentralized architecture with the smart contract functionality helping in real estate option so there are three countries which have officially uh, claimed blockchain as their way forward one is japan where they are trying to bring in lot of uh, incentives and initiatives uh, for both Uh, the government level and the uh, private level for adoption of blockchain the uae government which has adopted blockchain for all its commercial purposes then if you happen to see the transaction or rather which is with regard to the transport sector which again becomes a part of your supply chain so where what how becomes addressed as part of your commodity trading because it is a combination of trust combination of your supply chain you are using the blockchain as a framework so this way you are trying to bring in the various insights and make the most out of it if you happen to come into education sector basically ibm with in collaboration with the national university of singapore develop a fintech module to enable students on this technology using distributed ledgers so therefore this co develop the curriculum which can help students to own and work in a decentralized framework so all this particular things gives you the insight where the traditional approaches what we are seeing today can be done in a new approach without changing the core concepts so in summary this becomes the thought process on how exactly you can see your blockchain and where exactly you can do one thing what i would like to go ahead and say cryptocurrency is not blockchain blockchain is something which has cryptocurrency as a derivative because many people or many a times we might be under an assumption bitcoin and blockchain are both same it is not bitcoin uses blockchain framework to pursue its transactions so with this we get to a stage where we get to complete the planned agenda i would be open for the questions and then we can go for that sanip you are on mute yes thank you so much uh, for that sir uh, i'm i'm sure we have got uh, i mean at least as as a layman also we have understood how does the blockchain what is crypto all about so a lot of things which we have learned today i'm really happy to know as you in a simpler terms you said like bitcoin is a product and a blockchain is a platform so this is where uh, we need to understand how the blockchain works on different sectors and segments so now we'll just take up few questions sir quickly uh so there there are few questions which have already been listed but uh, there's one anonymous attendee who's asking how does blockchain work in supply chain 
okay so basically the key component in supply chain are two things transparency and traceability so blockchain helps you to bring in this both components so when you say traceability where is your product at what point of time under whose uh, control becomes the biggest challenge which is part of your transaction and then you are uh, trust you know that whatever has entered you you should you will not be able to change that way it has entered the supply chain especially with uh, fmcg as i was saying perishable goods uh, blockchain being very much used for fisheries blockchain is used for uh, your uh, perfumes and liquors which is the high ticket uh, items so that your duplication or uh, fraud values don't enter the ecosystem so that way supply chain uh, plays a crucial role for blockchain great sir thank you thank you so much for that sir uh, i hope uh, we have answered your query uh, the next question is been asked by chaitra she says what is the impact of enterprise blockchain in the business world so definitely it has a high stake high returns and the adoption of blockchain is getting a uh, way 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 better than what it was so if you happen to see previously it was uh, only to a cryptocurrency but today if you happen to see even from an uh, government indian government standpoint the digital currency what was launched by rbi last month is a derivative out of blockchain so that way what remained in textbooks till recently is seeing a productization of the facts and get going so definitely there is a way to uh, high for uh, leveraging blockchain in enterprise okay. thank you so much sir uh, the next question is been asked by ms uh, reema revankar how might enterprise blockchain alter the way forthcoming system and applications are designed so like i said the the adoption of blockchain in uh, enterprises especially uh, in healthcare or in, in finance or uh, in your uh, uh, fmcg is becoming very 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 high so with this adoption the the way you will be seeing things will become very very interesting so if i have to give a simple example when you order something on an e-commerce website today you will be able to go ahead and see exactly where exactly is your shipment when exactly you can go so that is the traceability component but the traceability today is not coming up with trust you are trusting the e-commerce company and that's where you are coming imagine when the trust and traceability both gets combined the power of it so that way the enterprise blockchain has a lot of room uh and probably these three areas uh the healthcare the finance are the early adapters and there you will see a lot of productization uh with blockchain adoption thank you so much sir for that we'll just take a couple of more questions sir yeah. uh which database and front end combination is the best for developing an analytics platform okay so this we are talking about analytics a uh, lot to do with blockchain so for analytics the uh, front end can be any of the front ends it can work with your java javascript or even for that matter you can use any browser based front end the ui5 and things around it and at the same time depending on the data you will decide your database so if your data is humongous you will go with big data approach if the data is manageable any rdbms like your sql will make the fit thank you so much sir i hope we have answered your uh, query ms jeeva and the last but not the least question is uh, mr jay kumar ask is the bitcoin safe for a long run reap for long duration reap okay so is the bitcoin is, safe I, yeah bitcoin safe okay so uh, i would i would like to answer this way 
the Bitcoin by its person. If you happen to get a chance and if you read the paper published by uh, Satoshi Nakasoko, the amount of Bitcoins which will get available in the world is fixed. Over a time period, the, until unlike our currency, today, for example, each current country uses its currency, but there is no end point saying that how much currency can be printed. But that is not the phenomenon in a Bitcoin. For that matter, any cryptocurrency, the amount of currency which can get created will be very fixed. Only it gets transacted. So from that standpoint, it is, it is uh, like a saying, there, there is an end point for that beyond which you cannot go ahead and mine it. So from that standpoint, it becomes one of the uh, uh, adaptable things. Whether it is safe, unsafe is something which is a relative subject to go ahead and talk about. But uh, from a safety standpoint, trust standpoint, it's something which is very, very much safe. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, we'll, we'll just, since we have a time, we'll take up one more question, uh, which, which is, uh, what is the relationship between the blockchain and data science? A very interesting question. So basically, like I said, from a digital transformation standpoint, there are four pillars, IoT, big data, data science, and blockchain, and they are interrelated. Data sourcing happens through your internet of things. Data storage happens with reference to your big data. Data decision making happens through your data science. And the framework which can regulate all these three things is through blockchain. Great, sir. Thank you so much for explaining us in a, such a simpler languages. Uh, I would love to express my gratitude uh, towards you, sir, for uh, sparing time. Uh, so before we leave, I want to, uh, since you are also a faculty at GIBS IRE, what we have the IRE school for GIBS students. Mm -hmm. So would you love, would you like to put some light on how this is helping the students of GIBS uh, towards the IRE? What it helps in the industry when they move forward? So just, just to expand the acronym IRE, it is innovation, research, and entrepreneurship. So the way I put this is that is something which enables anybody to see the light of a product, light of what we learn versus what we act. And to enable that IRE is a launching platform. So today, whatever we do, for example, if you buy a new mobile phone, a mobile phone, what you are buying is a result of somebody's innovation, somebody's entrepreneurship, which was backed up by research. So if there was no research, there was no product. If there was no product, there was no entrepreneurship. And that grassroot level at a post-graduation program, when you have an understanding of the current activities, trying to monetize from how you can convert your knowledge from your undergraduation, your education into something which is tangible is your IRD. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, so for putting it in a nutshell. I'm sure all of our students are getting benefited out of it. And uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us and sharing your knowledge of about the blockchain. I'm sure uh, it was very informative and helpful for all the audience. And I would also like to express my gratitude to all the beloved associates, the beloved students, the faculty members, and the entire education fraternity for being with us. And GABS always believes in seeing is believing. So we would love to invite you to GABS campus. And we are also honored, like we have resource people like Kiran Babu sir, who's a research scholar as well. And he's an expert in a lot of data science, blockchain and things. So we would love to uh, have an interaction in case if anybody would love to visit GIBS, they would love the state of art infrastructure facility. And uh, one small announcement that our next webinar would be on 17th of January. That is 17th of January, we have our next webinar, which has been scheduled. So, uh, and the certificate of this webinar will be shared to your email IDs within two working days. And I would love to uh, in, invite all the participants to follow GIBS on all the social media platforms so that you stay updated what's happening with GIBS and what all the upcoming 
events, webinars, seminars, whatever we conduct, the IRE talks we, we conduct. So you will be stay, you will be updated. Thank you so much. Have a good day ahead. And by the way, last but not the least, I wish you a very, very happy and a prosperous new year before we wind up the show. Thank you so much, Kiran sir. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone.